This is the FM Gold Channel of All India Radio. In the program Spotlight, now we bring you a discussion on U.S.-India commerce and trade relations. The participants are A.K. Bhattacharya, economic analyst, and Atul Aneja, journalist. U.S. President Donald Trump is visiting India and his visit has already caused a lot of buzz both domestically and I think also internationally as well. That is to be expected given that India is the second largest emerging economy and if not the most rapidly growing economy and U.S. is the world's largest economy. We also have very strong geopolitical and even geocultural dimensions of the relationship which are only growing. But focus on the economic dimension of the relationship. Why is the trade relationship between India among the economic relationship so important both for the present and for the future, both bilaterally and if you can broaden it out even regionally and internationally. U.S., we all know, is the world's largest economy, even though it may not be growing as fast as the Chinese economy is, but it is still by far the largest economy and it so happens that India's largest trading partner is U.S., so therefore, what you are expecting from visit the U.S. president to India, and this president, this is the first visit to India, some sort of a, you are expecting some sort of a movement, dialogue. Actually, a lot of people were expecting kind of trade pact between U.S. and India. When you talk of a trade pact, there has been a major trade spat between India and the United States. This has resulted mainly from the raising of tariffs from the U.S. side on steel and aluminum products. And India, in retaliation, has also raised tariffs on certain agriculture products like almonds and apples, etc. So that is the context in which the negotiations had started. What stage do you think are these negotiations for a resolution going on? Are we anywhere close to a resolution? On the contrary, is there a meeting point at all right now? The signals that we are getting right now is that Donald Trump's entourage does not have USTR, which is the U.S. Trade Representative, mm -hmm. Mr. Lighthizer. He is not coming, although the Commerce Secretary is coming. Mr. Wilbur Ross, Ross is coming, but Mr. Lighthizer is not coming. So that itself is a clear signal that we cannot expect the kind of a trade pact which could have seen resolution of some of the, the sticking points in Indo-US economic trade relations. Could you identify the sticking points? Well, the sticking points largely began when India was taken off the generalized systems of preferences under which as much as around 6 billion of Indian exports to US was affected in a sense that special tariff treatment was withdrawn on imports of Indian goods into the US. It was part of the US-India trade dialogue that India would like that GSP treatment to be restored. But what the US has done, probably in a bid to strengthen its bargaining position, it has further informed the Indian authorities that its status as developed economy cannot can no longer be recognized as a tool for determining its status as a developing country. Development, you know, you know, there are some countervailing measures which the U.S. economy imposes and it does not impose if you are a developing economy. Got it. Now, the moment you cease to be a developing economy, which is a per capita income goes beyond 2000, then you are not entitled to those special benefits on countervailing sure. duties. But signal which is coming by reinforcing the GSP aspect with the developing country aspect is that U.S. right now is in no mood to bargain or come to a compromise. So itself is a negative signal, just a negotiating tactic to put more pressure on us to come on board. But definitely it doesn't spell out we are closer to a deal. We are definitely not closer to a deal. Even if you go by recent statements by the U.S. president where he clearly stated that we would like to see a bigger deal and probably that will come after the elections. Those statements will have to be taken on board before we discuss anything on U.S. India but trade Very interesting relations. point. So you see a political dimension now coming, which is the elections. Elections. In, in because 2020 uh, elections in absolutely. the U.S. Absolutely. The president has made it clear that a bigger deal. Now, this does not mean that whether a smaller deal may still be discussed and maybe some MOU can be entered into. Nothing can be ruled out. Therefore, what I'm saying is this, that the big trade deal... As you mentioned that the U.S. raised tariff on steel and aluminium in the wake of its raising tariff on many of trading partners on Europe, on China. So India was also included there. And then India, in a sense, retaliated. India also raises tariff. The recent budget has raised duties on almonds, diesel almonds now. The relationship between U.S. and India on trade front has not been a very, very cozy one. The U.S. was very keen, as we understand, that some of the items which U.S. exports, particularly two kinds of items. One was the Harley-Davidson mobile, and second was a range of dairy items, cheese, milk products, 
Now, those items, the U.S. government wanted that the duty treatment should be made more lowered. Lower. But that would be a problem because if you start importing more dairy products, probably going to hit the Indian milk producers big time. And we again have to see the political dimension of that because if you alienate your own domestic population, which is a very strong group and probably a domestic lobby, if you want to call it, that's not going to be easy for us either to open you know, it out. What you're saying is correct because from economic point of view, lowering tariff on such items because of the distance those products will travel, especially the dairy food items, I don't think economically it would have hurt the domestic dairy industry. But having said no to joining the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership Program on the same ground on the dairy that we will not like to join RCEP because our dairy industry will be affected. So that itself became a standpoint of the government and that has made it even more political that having said no to RCEP on the ground that we will not allow lower import of dairy items at lower rates, how can you say we will so, allow import of dairy items so, from the U.S. So, at lower rates. So, it's so a question of credibility then. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And what we are, have conveyed very effectively in the last few years is that we are taking trade as area of negotiation, yeah. Yeah. which we will decide only after politically they are acceptable. What are the leverages do we have in getting a good deal with the U.S.? Do you think lowering our dependence on the West and the U.S. and aligning more strongly with the growing economies of the Asia-Pacific, and there I mean ASEAN and Japan and and China, or maybe what you mentioned, the RCEP. Do you see that RCEP is a bargaining chip with the U.S., that if really things go too hard, then we have not completely refused getting into us. We want RCEP to be renegotiated. Frankly, it's a slightly confusing scenario right now. Right. When India walked out of RCEP, citing reasons those of the dairy industry's vulnerability to lower duties and, of course, services. But in services, we we had an advantage. One thought that we are probably using the RCEP to get into a deal with the U.S. Now, if RCEP is not there and U.S. deal is not there, my sense is the lever, the leverage that you're talking about, that of the ASEAN faster-growing economies, and you get yourself connected to that world through a trade pact. And through supply chains. Supply chains, the global value chains. Yes. You are losing out on that. So if you're not an RCEP, you are not getting the U.S. deal. The real fear and the danger is that are you getting isolated? That I'm sure our negotiators are extremely yeah. cautious about that. So probably it's not a good idea to reveal your cards right now while you're negotiating with the U.S. So a blanket refusal of joining RCEP perhaps may not be the most prudent thing right now till uh, we have sorted out a deal with the U.S. and vice versa as well to keep the RCEP a little bit on tenter hooks that look, well, if you guys board, then we go along with the U.S. Not correct. in a bad position really. To be correct, I think that clear signals have also been sent that RCEP is not completely ruled out. So there are talks that are going on with RCEP and RCEP indications, particularly from Singapore, what they're coming are that India is still open uh, to discussing. What about terms. Japan and Australia? Because they well, Japan and Australia are batting for India at the RCEP because they are, our, in a sense, our allies in this grouping. But I think it's important to look at the U.S. trade relations from the point of view of whether trade can be used as a lever for getting more investment. Let's broaden it out, trade to generally on the economic side. Perhaps it may be in India's national interest not to play a zero-sum game here at all, that perhaps we keep the U.S. track open while bonding with the RCEP countries and keeping both the options open. And that will require a very different kind of negotiating skills and knowing your strengths and leverages. Do you think, is it too idealistic? Perhaps you think the world is coming to a point where you have to make definite choices? Well, you know, unfortunately, the multilateral trading system that had been put in place is on the wane, in a sense that the WTO, which had become very functioning, effective global trading platform, that platform received a jolt when on December 10 last year, 2019, the dispute settlement body is no longer functional and the WTO multilateral trade framework is not being very, very functional. Now, given the demise or a decline of the multilateral trading system, it is very important for us to tie ourselves into regional trading blocks or even bilateral trading partnerships. Now, I think both the U.S. trade partnership and the RCEP 
are important for the Indian economy, for Indian manufacturers, for Indian exports, and even Indian imports. So therefore, we have to use both our opportunities with the U.S. as well as the RCEP very, very judiciously. Absolutely. And so we come to other problem which arises when you integrate more in, in global supply and value chains, and which is, again, your resistance within the country. Probably the competitiveness of the Indian industry is not that great to get integrated in the supply chains because of the informal sector we have. We are not yeah. really part of the globalized world that way because of years of protectionism which we have had. So the, perhaps the biggest problem in coming to a arrangement parallelly with the U.S. side as a regional blocks we're talking about and with the RCEP, the biggest hurdle to that is really the domestic and oh, absolutely. Effect. You hit the nail on the head in a sense that no trade policy can succeed on its own in isolation. A successful trade policy is also one which comes along with domestic reforms of factor markets. Now, unless you look at the logistics sector, unless you look at the, the ease of doing business in the ports, unless you look at the productivity issues in your manufacturing sure. sector, you will not be able to take full advantage of an open trading environment. So, therefore, while we negotiate for better tariffs on the trade front with RCEP as well as with the U.S., we should also focus at the same time on our domestic sectors and reforms in the domestic economy, on land, on labor, on capital. Do you think this would be the time to bite the bullet on the domestic reforms? Because this is a government which is just into second year and it doesn't have that electoral pressure right now, which might happen when you are closer to the next elections, 2024. Well, so I, the timing, would you say? I think this is the time to use trade and take those bold decisions because if you do not do those, take those decisions, my fear is that just by raising tariffs and not getting into regional trade pacts or a trade pact with the U.S., India's manufacturing sector can actually be out of the global value chain, which is critically important in a world trading order, which is becoming less and less multilateral and more becoming bilateral. How do you soften the blow internally? Because if you take this hard step, there are people who are going to be disenchanted, but who have to be educated as well. And you also have to create something internally to absorb, let's say in terms of labor reforms, if you talk about, they're going to be people out of jobs. If you are going to get in, as in a democracy, how do you manage these kind of groups which will emerge inevitably and put them into productive channels? My sense is that it cannot be a situation where there's old saying that there is no gain without pain. There will be some pain, but those pains will be of a short-term nature and there will be adjustment problems, there will be disruptions. Remember that goods and services tax has caused a lot of disruption. And the new compliance, the regimen that the government has put in place of new taxations actually created a lot of compliance issues. But then there are long-term benefits to sure, be had. Sure. So therefore, it is important for us to actually negotiate hard, negotiate for the Indian manufacturer and negotiate in a manner that we get the benefits of both global trade as well as trade with the yes. important trading partners. Excellent point. So if you were to look at the Indo-US trade issue, we can see that this is an issue which cannot be seen just in isolation, but there are many, many channels which flow into it. In some ways, it's a microcosm of India evolution and its attempt to get into the global supply chains and value chains. And U.S. is a very major factor. And therefore, the importance of this visit is that can we take forward India's agenda, keeping these global pressures in mind with the negotiations or talks which are going to take place between Prime Minister Modi and Mr. Trump? Let me add, it is very important to have a trade pact with the U.S. because you have China who is waiting and watching what is happening between India and U.S. So therefore, at least... To counter China, and we import a lot, we have a huge trade deficit with China, we need to strengthen our relationship with the U.S. where we have a surplus. What we need to do is, because China being a second largest economy, we need to balance our relationship between the U.S. and China because we can't blank out any of them. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Mr. Bhattacharya. Thank you. You were listening to a discussion on U.S.-India commerce and trade relations. The participants were A.K. Bhattacharya, economic analyst, and Atul Aneja, journalist. This program was produced and presented by the News Services Division of All India Radio. This program is also available on our website, newsonair.com. You can also follow us on the News on AIR app for updates. You may email your opinion about this program at airnsdtalks at gmail.com.